What's up, everybody? Welcome to a review of Simaron. I'm Rick. And I'm Anna. And uh, today we're going to review this movie that we've just watched uh, a day ago, which is a movie that was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Award, uh, at the fourth Academy Award in 1931. And the reason why we're reviewing this is because it's part of our bigger goal to watch and review every movie that was nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Award from 1927 to 2028. So many movies. Yes. <laughs> right now we're only at the fourth Academy Award. This is actually the last movie of the fourth Academy Award. Uh, this and is the movie that won the winner. Best yes. Picture that year. But uh, we've also done 2019. So we've done like five years. Well, after this video, we will have done five years, which is exciting. We're getting... Uh, yeah, it is. Like, eh? further that, and further. that uh, number is growing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're still in a time where they were doing like uh, over two years, you know, like this one is, I think, the 1930, 1931. Yeah. Not because it's two years, but because the date... It starts in like July. I think, it's or 12 like months this. between those two years. Yes. So the way we're going to do this review is the same way we do all of these review. The first part is going to be spoiler free for you people out there. You want to watch a review, want to know about the movie, but don't necessarily want it spoiled because you want to watch it yourself. Uh, second part, we are going to discuss some elements that uh, jumped at us during our watch of the movie, uh, but with spoilers. Don't worry, we're not gonna like tell you everything that happened in the movie and we're also going to... We wouldn't to, have time. <laughs> yeah. We're also going to warn you before we get into any of the spoilers. Before any of that though, let me give you some info about this movie that we've watched. So the movie again called Cimarron uh, came out in February 9th, 1931. It is a RKO Radio Pictures production. First time we hear that one. Uh, it is based on the book of the same name by Edna Ferber, a book that came out in 1929. Directed by Wesley Ruggles and uh, starring, I only put up two names, Richard Dix as the NC Cravat and uh, Irene Dune as Sabra Cravat. The movie, here are some of my uh, interesting or not interesting, depending how you look at it, facts. So for one of the scenes of the movie, as I describe it, you realize what I'm talking about and the people at home who've seen the movie too. For the big land rush scene of the movie, more than 28 cameramen uh, and numerous camera assistants and photographers were used to capture the scene uh, with more than 5,000 costume extra. Covered wagons, uh, bicyclists, uh, everything, like race, like you saw the scene, you yeah, yeah, yeah. all the elements there. Uh, so it was a big part of the movie, like why the movie was uh, praised at the time. We'll talk about the reception a bit later, but that scene, it was grandiose. In order to film a key scene for this production, especially this one that I just talked about, RKO purchased 89 acres uh, of land and uh, they used it to film that scene but also to build uh, the fictional town oh really in which the movie happens the money wasn't spent for nothing the they would use uh, those sets for future movies uh, okay. afterward but still despite being that's a movie that came out in 1931 yeah? two years after the crack the market crack of 1929 uh, the economy wasn't doing that well uh, but despite that uh, the company invested 1.5 million dollar which at the time was a huge sum into the production of this movie mm -hmm. a lot of the cash of course went to that land rush scene into buying oh, right. a whole uh, a land and then building everything so despite the fact that the movie was a critical success and even a commercial success if you compare it to other movies at the time it could not recoup its budget its production budget at least not on the first run it was re-released again in uh, 1935 and made some more money there the movie as i said was at the time, a big critical success. It was nominated for seven Academy Awards. Seven? Yes. Wow. Um, I mean, how many were there back then? Like 10 altogether? The there number weren't of awards? Many. Yeah, there weren't that many. <laughs> so, uh, of course, the first one, uh, Outstanding Production or Best Picture, which it won. Best Director for Wesley uh, Ruggo. Best Actor for Richard Dix. Best actress, uh, actress for Irene Dune. Best Adaptation, it won. Best Art Direction for Max Ray, won. Best Cinematography, Edward uh, Cronjugger. So three awards out of seven nominations. So you would say for sure the movie is a success. You know, critically, people were raving about it at the time. But now, if you look a bit online, look at reviews, uh, modern appraisal of the film have not been has positive. If you go on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, Cimarron currently holds a 53% approval rating. The site's consensus read, Cimarron is supported by strong performances from Irene, 
but uneven and basically every other regards, and riddled with potentially offensive stereotypes. I can disagree with that. So. Yeah. Another review says, It's an excellent study of how tastes have changed over the years. Critically lauded at the time of its release, Cimarron was beloved by most who saw it. Eight decades later, it is frequently cited on list of the most undeserving Academy Awards winner, and it is rightfully uh, impugned for its racist overtone and scattershot storytelling. And just the last one, just for fun. Seen with contemporary eyes, the film is badly dated, slow moving, and pocket with racist caricatures. The recreation of the 1889 Oklahoma land rush remains an exciting spectacle. Unfortunately, the film never managed to top this opening shot. The film was, uh, of course, I said, adapted from a book, and another version of the book was remade in 1960. That is the last adaptation of this book to film. So there's only two. And let's get into our conversation. I wanted right. to put these reviews out there just to set the tone. This is going to be spoiler free for the first part. Can you tell me, like, did you like this movie? Do you agree with uh, those modern critics? I do agree with the modern critics. They said that the, the racist, offensive tone of the movie is kind of obvious. Yeah. When I say kind of, it's just obvious. I do agree that the story is a little bit scattered. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of your commentary on uh, the other movie that we watched earlier in this series, uh, East Lane. Yeah. It kind of felt like that a little bit. Lots of things happening, but we're never digging into any particular thing. Exactly. And it had, for me, the, the point where I felt it the most, was that at some point, maybe halfway through the movie, I feel like we switch from the following the, the husband as the main character to following the wife as the main character, mm -hmm. which it feels weird. You want to keep following his story because it seems like it's his story yeah. mainly, but then it's not anymore. I don't know. It just felt weird to me. Mm -hmm. watching that yeah i'm going to say like this movie to me was a roller coaster i even started to tell you as i was watching this movie is making me hate it and at the same time <laughs> is entertaining me i was fully entertained i gotta say the whole time yeah me too but uh, it is not to say that i would say this is a, a great movie i'm still confused a bit about how i feel about it because there's a lot of contradiction in the movie itself i don't think the movie itself knows what it's trying to be Right. Because yes, there's all these racist on the tone, but sometimes they make critiques of the like, racist elements of yeah. their world. But the movie itself is... Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I know. Like, I know what you mean. Totally. There's this dichotomy. Like, I feel mean... like maybe the movie, like the producers wanted to put out a movie that criticized racism and all of that. But because of the times when they lived or something like this, maybe their they weren't prejudice. so much... Yeah, exactly. Like, they're not so much aware of, okay, we want to, like, criticize racism, but this thing is also racist. This thing is also, yeah. like, offensive. This thing should... that we're doing right now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. So it feels like it's just... They, they tried to do it, which, you know, I, I feel like it's to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. But they fail to see all the elements that they should have focused on. And I feel like this is uh, the most represented in the husband's character. And we're going to talk about it when I, we go into spoilers. But he was all over the place. Oh, yes. And I was, totally. en I was entertained by but him. Because he's, he's good. He's the good. Actor the actor, good. he was so... I thought that too. Yeah. The actor was so good. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it was the most exciting part of the movie. Whenever he to was watch, there. To yeah. watch him, yeah. Uh-huh. What about the, the look and feel of the movie? We talked a lot about that land rush scene. Uh, I like what it looked like yeah. overall. Mm -hmm. um, when I think of the, all these older movies that I've seen, I feel like it's definitely on the better side. Yeah. In terms of sound quality, uh, visuals, and all of that. Mm. I feel like it was put together really well. Uh, the scenes were very exciting. I feel like, especially in that... Well, that that opening scene was obviously like the the high point the of everything. Yeah. I feel like you can definitely tell that they were experimenting with like new camera angles, filming like from uh, up top. There were some scenes filmed from like mm -hmm. really high above. There's there even at one point, and I noticed because it was just so jarring for a movie of that time. We watched a lot of movies from the 30s and the 20s. There was a point where the camera moved. Like, I, re but I not, remember that. I not remember hand hold, hold. Like it moved as if it was on a... Like movies today, you know, they're on a machine. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, it's moving. It's not just cuts between different yes, camera angles. Which is something point. that is so usual now. You yeah, know? today you wouldn't yeah. even think about it. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely tell that they took the cinematography like part of it 
to like kind of the next level. Yeah, and um, to touch on the story just a little bit before we get into our spoiler section, I feel like the story, again, scattered all over the place, uh, never too deep on one element. You know, we just explore this and then, oh, we move on. Oh, we're exploring this so half assedly that I don't even know... <laughs> Like if what I, this is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely a book. This movie? Yeah. I feel like they took the book and they made a movie out of it. And this might work as a book because you have time to be with the characters and their thoughts. You have time to learn who the different uh, characters are and see. Like, There's just more time in a book. You develop everything way more. This is a book condensed into a two-hour movie and you can feel it. Let's get into a spoiler discussion now. If you guys want to avoid spoilers, I invite you to like this video and escape right now. But if you don't right. mind, let's get right into it. I thought we would start with just a short synopsis okay. of the movie. Very simple. This is the story of a newspaper editor that settles in an uh, Oklahoma boomtown with his reluctant wife at the end of the 19th century. It says end of the 19th century, but the movie spans like 40 years, uh, which right. is an interesting choice. A lot of the reviews at the time, because I checked some old reviews too, were saying like, this is a epic uh, story that spanned 40 years, like as if it was like a good thing. And then the modern reviews were like, this is all over the place. Why is it 40 years? You stay in one year for like two scenes and then they jump to five years later, you know? So And again, I think this is, works as a book because you have several chapters in uh, 1993, let's say, and then several chapters in 1995. And but I feel mm. like this is a, a technique that just got improved over time because mm -hmm. I've seen more recent movies where the, the story happens over very long peri periods of time and they work. They're done in a, yeah, in a certain you, way. You, like have, you to have to know You have to know how to... Jump around and write. how to focus on the important moments and what to focus on. So I think the, one of the biggest elements of how scattered the story is and how at times it made you feel like what am I even watching and why do I care when kids come into town kid is a, a bandit come into town start shooting everywhere presumably to rob a bank it's never clear Yancy uh, go out and then ends up killing him and then he, he's upset about it cries not cry but like complain to his wife like this was my friend we used to sleep together and I'm like who even is kid right you never but they did introduce him for like they introduced him for two five minutes second, yeah yeah in the beginning and then he's gone and and he comes back and he has to kill him but like there's never a story developed there yeah. like there's we don't see that connection other than the fact that he tells us that we're supposed mm -hmm. to care about this guy. exactly and i was like if this had been like digged up more you know like we met kid at the beginning yeah make him come back from time to time just visit the nc yeah, exactly. so you can see that they're actually friends and then when he has to kill him then you feel something yeah exactly. but no he's there at the beginning for like two minutes and then comes back gets killed and we're like and the main character's like oh man he was my best friend like no <laughs> <laughs> the moment when he he starts talking about after he killed him and he starts talking about it and that he it was his best friend and all of that that's when i realized that he was the same guy from the beginning <laughs> when while it was happening like the shooting was happening i didn't even realize yeah. it was the same guy like the... i want to stay on yancy because i was saying like he his character makes no sense his character is the moral compass of the story so always like criticizing like how our indigenous people are treated uh always being nice to that horrible uh, caricature of a black kid uh, one who followed them yeah, yeah yeah horrible horrible yes and so you feel like oh he's the good guy he's being nice to the prostitute you know he's always trying to see the bigger picture yeah and to mm. see the good in people yeah exactly and... but i want to specifically talk about how he's uh, hoping with indigenous uh, problems you know he writes an op-ed about how they should get uh, citizenship yeah and how they uh. should get their land and... but at the same time he cannot resist to any occasion to go take their land he was in the land rush he wanted the land for himself yeah and then goes complaining that we're we're taking their land. The fact that he just at random moments leaves his family, abandon them basically. Oh yeah. For years, for years at, a time. at a time. Yes. Oh my gosh. And then he comes and back, and you're supposed to be sympathetic for him. He comes back and he moralizes his wife, like, "Why are you against this prostitute girl? I'm gonna go and show you, like, that you're a bad person. You're a bad person." Yeah. You just left for five years, and now you yeah. come back, and you think you can put things into order. Yeah. And that scene when he comes back, and his kids are all excited. Yeah. His like daughter never even saw him. Right. Like, he left when she was a, a newborn. Baby, yeah. I. It, 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 
it doesn't mm. work. And then uh, there's something to be said about th- that's what the character is. You know, mm-hmm. he, he he seeks adventure. He can't stay in one place. That's just in his nature. And like, I have to go chase the new thing. You know, I build this down. He basically built the town. Right. I built this down, but n- that's boring. I want to go build another town now. At the same time, like the fact that then he comes back and tried to run to be governor, you know, like that's not the type of character that he is. The governor, I would have to stay there and yeah. not move and stay with the... You see what I mean? Like his character just... He's Exactly. Does whatever seems the most righteous, even when it's contradictory with his nature. I think it also comes into conflict, or maybe it's on purpose. I wanted to talk about that, especially when watching the movie, with the wife's character. Because uh, by the end of the movie, she ends up being a congresswoman. She's the one who ran the newspaper for all these years while the husband was gone. You're, you're supposed to take her as an accomplished woman, you know? Right. Someone even makes a comment, you did all this by yourself. But as I was watching the movie, I was wondering, they're trying to tell me she did all this by herself and to show this strong woman who, you know, can't take care of herself, while simultaneously always bringing back Yancy as the moral compass who to like steer her right who st- exactly steer her in the right direction otherwise she wouldn't be able to do it you know yeah he comes back tells her like oh no stop writing these defamation articles about that prostitute girl you know uh, write this uh, like do this type of stuff instead and then disappears comes back oh write about uh, indigenous people should get citizenship and she mentions that at the end afterward that oh after he wrote that article like everything happened the government gave them citizenship every- people wrote us later like he's the reason the newspaper is doing well even while not being there yeah and so i feel like it takes away from her accomplishment i feel like what they try to do with her character and didn't really succeed mm. is to show like he's the guy with the ideas right yeah he's the guy with this like vision of this better world or whatever but he can't like stay in one place enough to like take to do it to do it right he just has the idea but then like she's the one who actually does it and i feel like in that sense it would work but they didn't really do it that well mm. just because it, it always seemed like he's just jumping in and telling her what to do rather than starting off something and then showing her actually accomplishing it yeah and then you she know? would push it to the next level yeah, exactly because it's actually the opposite she's always in the opposite direction of what yeah. He comes in to tell her what to do. She's against the prostitute. She's against the indigenous people. Yeah. And he comes in, tells her, no, do this instead. And then leaves. And then she does what he told her. And then the business succeeds. Yeah, exactly. And then it, it also in the end shows that she ends up seeing his point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like understanding what he was saying. Which again, I don't feel like is necessarily a bad thing. But it wasn't done that It well. wasn't shown either. Yeah. It just jumps in the future. And then she's like, he was right about the indigenous. While the whole rest of the movie, yeah, she, she was, was bad-mouthing them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I want to shed like a positive light on it. That maybe that's what they tried to do, mm. but didn't succeed. Which is why, like, I don't know. This movie, again, we're talking about a lot of negative aspects. I am conflicted by this movie. I was entertained while watching it. But I can poke holes all day long. Yeah, totally. And, and how this movie was made. And how they portray black people, indigenous people, Jewish people. That's another big contradiction, I think. That while he is uh, militating for giving the rights and citizenship to the indigenous people, he had the black kid well, as a like, servant. As a, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You can't have it both ways, you know. Yeah. But again, as he's militating for indigenous people to get their land back, he's taking their land. Yeah. So hey, I, I don't know that he truly knows what he what he. But wants. I feel like that goes back to what I was saying in the beginning that that shows that the people involved in the production weren't really so much aware of those things. Mm. Like they thought they had an idea, like oh, we're gonna. Show show this character who's like you know good and righteous and everything but they don't see the issues of their society or yeah. their past of the mm. their past to actually like focus on them but again like when you look at the reviews and at the time majority of people didn't see any issue with this movie and now people are looking at it right because now we're others. more aware of yeah of every of all of these aspects you watch the movie and within five minutes as soon as they show that young black guy you're like okay this movie is racist i could keep talking about this movie for an hour but we'd probably tread the same ground uh would you recommend this movie i'm not sure i really i'm not sure again i'm not sure how i feel like about the movie like if you would ask me is this a good movie is this a bad movie I'm not sure what to answer. I was entertained. It's a problematic movie on a, in a lot of aspects. I would say watch it still, just to get entertained. That's what movies are for most of the time. I mean, I don't want to say no because I feel like it's entertaining enough and it's a good enough movie. Mm. 
But I, at the same time, I don't really want to say yes because, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not encouraging the movie. I think that it's a good movie to watch if you want to see how, like, all these issues were being portrayed back then. Mm -hmm. More as, like, as a study. Yeah. Rather than just take it for what it is. Oh, of course not. <laughs> take it for what it is. Uh, I'm not sure you're gonna have a, such a good time. Again, yeah. story scattered all over the place. Characters contradicting themselves. Racist <laughs> on the tone. But, hey, great acting. It's oh, yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. And that uh, Land Rush scene. If you guys have comments to make about this movie, if you've seen it, please tell us in the comment section below what did you think of it. Uh, like this video if you did. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to this channel if you want to. We don't only watch movies here. This is a bucket list channel in which we do a lot of things from our bucket list. Uh, you can check that out and uh, subscribe if you want. Have a nice day.